Chasing some Mekong catfish. This is an awesome scissor. We've got a big one hooked up. Holy! That thing's huge. Got it. Oh. Look at that. Look at that fish, guys. That is awesome. Check that out. Meat gone catfish, man. Catching them on rotten pineapple and bread. All right, I'm gonna go get Sidra's fish. All right, Sidra's got one on. This is, my hands are slipping from the bait. <laughs> So these Mekong catfish have actually declined dramatically. They're critically endangered in their native range. And throughout the range, it's actually illegal to fish for them in the wild part of the central Mekong where the last uh, wild spawning populations remain. They think there's only a couple hundred fish left there. But in Thailand, they actually developed a way to raise these fish in hatcheries. And uh, what they do is they sell these fish to like uh, fishing ponds like this and then the excess revenue from that is used to raise additional fish that are released back into the Mekong River or into reservoirs throughout Thailand where they allow a seasonal harvest of 50 to 100 fish per year depending on the reservoir. And these fish are incredible in terms of their growth potentials. They can get up to 50 pounds a year in growth and they're primarily zooplankton feeders although they'll opportunistically feed on rotting fruit and things um, that fall into the water, but they really uh, are primarily just filter feeders, filtering algae out of the water. So you just got a big one going here. He's getting close. So this is a really cool opportunity to interact with this species in an ethical way uh, that supports the conservation of the species. That looks like a big one, Sid. Oh my God. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> you can see they have no barbels. When they're young, they have barbels, but they lose those as they get older because they don't need the barbels for finding zooplankton or locating food resources. Like all catfish, they don't have scales, so it's a very smooth skin. Big, pretty fish. This one's probably in the 50 to 60 pound range. All right, you want to let him go? Just slide him off the edge of the bank there. I'm not sure. Actually, here we go. Here you go. You got him. You got him. They're pretty tough. And they raise them in the shallow pools, rich in algae. They can go out and feed. I'm tired. You done? <laughs> Seems brilliant. Guitar string. <laughs> oh, geez. 
This is taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Eating algae, why do they need all that muscle? I haven't seen it yet. Right. Reel's not the best. So yeah, it little, jumps. It jumps. So yeah. does mine. Whoa! Oh. That's a big one. Do you need my help? I think I should be able to net it. Whoa, come on, pull me in. Whoa. Come on, let me turn you around. As much as I do. Holy! There we go. Oh my! That's a Mekong catfish. Never imagined as a little kid I'd be holding one of the world's largest bony fish. These guys can grow up to 350 pounds. Former record holders. Wow! This is heavy. I'm gonna get back in the water. It's a good thing you did all that lifting. That was awesome. Never imagined. I remember as a kid looking at National Geographic and seeing pictures of Mekong catfish and they are the Kong of catfish. Was that one bigger than mine? No. Yours is bigger. You got to drag them to nothing. <laughs> You're real smoother than mine. <laughs> yeah, that thing's missing a few gears. <laughs> Ooh, it's a big one. You've almost got him. Yeah, it's a monster. Beautiful fish, aren't they? So they only spawn on one section of the Mekong River now. There's a lake that feeds in, and they go up there and they track them using uh, DNA in the water because they're they're so rare and uh, hard to detect. And there's still a considerable amount of poaching pressure on them, which makes these farm fish all the more important for sustaining the species. All right, let's get that pretty pretty boy back in the water. Could be a girl. Could be a girl. Oh, okay. Already got one? Yeah. Drop. Yeah, you have to drop. Oh, Thank you.
Kiste. This big, beautiful Mekong Cactus. Even the little ones are formidable fighters with this large, powerful tail. They really like to hit it on the drop, I've noticed. I think they've been trained to respond to the splash and uh, they will come in and hit it. You can see they have no teeth, so they're a zooplankton feeder. They don't need teeth to filter anything out. They don't even really have much of a crushing plate or anything in there. Uh, so they just swim around, filter out all that algae that grows in this warm, rich, tropical water. Get this guy going. So this is a chum cage that comes with, you get a big thing of bait. The bait is like rotten donuts and fruit. And there's a soft, mushy, cake-like donut consistency. You just wrap this around into the bait cage, squeeze it in there really well. This is just chum that's gonna come out and attract them in. They'll often hit this Right when it hits and it starts to flake out, it gets them all feeding. Then in the bag comes a bunch of these ball things here. And those are much harder. And that's what you put on your little hook below. And this is what stays on the hook when they bite. Sometimes. Some people push this up in here, but I found that it doesn't really matter. We get the same number of hookups either way. And then they come over here and cast. You don't have to cast far and when you cast out they're going to come in and swipe at what's in that chum cage right away you'll see the line jump a lot as it goes down see there's a jump there's a jump those are fish hitting the bait cage and that's going to sink down through but what you're waiting for that is that long run when they pick up that hard bait because that is what doesn't just come apart in their mouth so sometimes i'll just let it sit there after all the initial hit on the chum cage and i'm waiting for the line to pick up and run. Sometimes that happens right away. Sometimes you get them on the drop. Sometimes you gotta wait a few minutes. But if it's been out there for more than a few minutes, well, there's there's one chewing on the bait, the hard bait. But if it's out there for more than a few minutes, you wanna pull it in and reset your bait and uh, bait ball. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's a good bite. There it is. <laughs> that's how it's done. There's just just the, the tiring and hard part. Is there a difference based on uh, on the hook where to place the ball? Did you find a difference? No, I didn't find any difference. Tie reels. Yeah, this one's being held on by some, I don't know, like super glue and uh, super like putty. Melted, melted yeah, from the. Oh my gosh, my hands are slippery. Let's turn it around. Scoop it in there. Turn my hand. It's fucking slippery. You just, you just shimmy like this. You just shimmy like this. My hands are just... <laughs> Well, I think I'm gonna make that one my last fish of the day. Absolute stunning fish. Beautiful. Look at the size of the tail on these guys, man. Super powerful. Such a cool experience to come into contact with these fish. Um, like I said, I don't think it's ethical to go and fish them in the wild where their population is under a lot of poaching pressure and they're really trying to recover, but these pay ponds are guiltless pleasure and a cool way to interact with this amazing and unique species of big cat, the Mekong catfish. See you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. <laughs>